Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, we have a NA House Divided campaign event for you. It should be a good one because we're playing Harper's Ferry Conquest. You're getting an overview of the first map, Outskirts, with our second map being Valley. Both maps very open, very beautiful to look at, and very hard to take once a team takes a flag because this is Conquest. And with that being said, here's the overview of the campaign. You can see that on the right. But the battle we're focusing on tonight is the Pickus Brigade ticket versus the first United States sharpshooters and the second USRS tickets you can see they're kind of low on manpower so we'll see how they can limit casualties but that being said on the Union campaign who is playing on Union both rounds tonight we have the second USR HD 8th Ohio 7th Mass 20th New York 30th Ohio whereas on the Confederacy we have Sussy Brigade which is the 5th Florida 5th North Carolina 1st Maryland and 1st Delaware the 2nd Mississippi, Army of Northern Virginia, Pickett's Brigade, and the 6th 5th Illinois. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. Here we are with our first round a little late here. However, still a lot of beautiful things to see. A map we haven't seen that often here on War of Rights, the outskirts map. One that's very beautiful. Union getting a very aggressive start here on Conquest. Going for that middle 8 point. While we do see the Confederates move out towards that C point. And it looks like Confederates are going to be with some Union skirmishers going to be as well. Uh, just as a reminder, the USA campaign is playing USA and the CSA campaign is playing CSA. So thankfully there's not much confusion. Looks like we have the 8th Ohio leading this group going to be right now. Union has already captured the A point starting off here. Which is huge. You can see in the distance there, Confederates are capping that C point very quickly. Their whole force is there. I'm intrigued to see what will happen here. Because uh, if Union cap this A and B point and they hold these points, it's going to be very hard for the Confederates to push. Because it's a very big and wide open field here. It looks like we have another Union group moving out towards uh, the B point. Looks like HD is going that way. Yeah, I was just checking to make sure I got things right. Uh, and it looks like we have the 5th Florida pushing out here. And the Union has captured B as well. The Union having a majority of points. Confederates beginning to push. We have a Union group, though, that is coming in behind these Rebels here. And it looks like the Confederates have captured C. And we looks like there's a volley happening here. But for now, a charge has is starting to begin here on the B point the 8th Ohio holding this fence line here this Union group is this the uh, HD guys we saw oh it's 20th New York killing the first Delaware here getting some auto line kills but they're getting out of line themselves a superior Confederate force holding here at the B point the Sussy Brigade pushing through this fence line 8th Ohio should have shots in a moment kind of a hard position to defend uh, just because they're on the lower ground. They do have that picket fence, though. So, it looks like we have 8th Ohio and 2nd USR and some of 7th Mass holding up on this snake fence against the Union. And that 20th New York group is moving behind the Confederates. I think Confederates will be able to win this side of the fight. More Union rushing over here, trying to help their friendlies at B. I think Union's going to be able to hold this position once their friendlies move in to capture these points 5th Florida and 5th NC repositioning onto that nice pick offense to get some flaking shots however there is a overwhelming Union force making that way let's check out from the Union quickly here who is defending the A point it looks like 30th Ohio led my Napoleon Ford the second is defending B while the Confederate onslaught is beginning to move that way Union's going to be able to hold B. However, Union is overreacting. A lot of Union forces are trying to uh, push off the small Confederate force. If the Union, Union needs to charge them out. Uh, because if anything, this Confederate force could probably take out 30th Ohio because this is a huge chunk of that Confederate force. If we look at numbers here. That is 93 to 109. So favoring the Union. Union has 10 more players than the uh, Confederates do which again is very helpful to their cause still a stalemate at the B point here beautiful artillery position from the Union side it's kind of hard to shoot at me 
It's really just gone to a shootout over here, though. But Union Artillery having nice, uh, nice overlook here at the A point. Shots still being engaged on this side of the field. Uh, so Union right now is probably looking a little weird. Union has four on art. Uh, sorry, nine on artillery. Confederates have four. A lot of fighting still happening here. Not really any charges, but you can see that Confederate group is getting withered out very, very slowly. So let's take a look here. Confederate force is pushing up. However, there are some Union forces here to stop this movement. Let's check out. So it looks like the 20th and the 7th mass is holding at A. And then we have the Army of Northern Virginia and 65th Illinois guy fighting with them. To the left, I guess to the right, but to the left of the A and B is the Pickett's Brigade led by Legion with 2nd Mississippi in pursuit. Uh, I thought there was more. There are more Confederates here. And this is 2nd Mississippi. Looks like that one guy just got a little lost. Uh, but they are pushing the A point now. A charge has just begun here. A and B charging into the seventh mass. What the heck? So it looks like A and B and Killer are gonna be able to win this charge at A. Union frantically falling off B because they wiped the majority of those guys. Uh, you can hear 1st Maryland and 1st VA Cav. Scott's the Major General of the Sussy Brigade, realizing that Union is pouring into this position right now. So Union here charging straight in. The Hoods Division is charging straight in with the 30th Ohio to clear out this Confederate force, and it looks like they will be able to do that with relative ease. So those Confederate groups are still holding back. If they charged in sooner, they might have the chance. But now the second Mississippi appears to be charging in. Uh, Union getting more aggressive, pushing closer and closer to this picket fence. And Confederates are pulling back because they don't want to get wiped and lose that flag. Because that flag, their spawn is over there. That's so far away from their spawn. So Union doing a really good job of just clamping down right now. Holding their defensive positions. They barely held. Um... But, yeah, looks like we have some Hoods Division. Looks like some sharpshooters pushing forward. Uh, Pickett's Brigade of Flag Bearer retreating, and the Confederates reforming at their spawn. Confederates now going down to engage. And it looks like, let's check out, where is the Confederate artillery on this map? Here is the Confederate artillery. Nice if you want to look up at C. Uh, are there any can? I think there are cannons up there that you can turn. But... Regardless, uh, second Mississippi on artillery here let me, let me for the Confederates. Kind of hard shots at A because um, it's just completely flat. Uh, you just got to aim that right. It's actually a little above where you're at. So kind of hard shots for them. Um, I do not know where that went. Who shot that? Kind of so second Mississippi sitting back and shooting here. Uh, USA holding firmly at B here. There is a um, 20 man imbalance. <laughs> it took me a moment. A 19 man imbalance in favor of the Union, which is why we're seeing such a dominant uh, effort here by the Union. A lot of close blank, blank shots here. Sussy Brigade on the Hoods division. And. Our man here is screaming for the Hoots Division to charge. You can see some Union players coming onto that white fence. And Sussy Brigade is going to be wiped here. Um, overwhelming Union forces. They're trying to reorganize, but they do it right as the Union forces slam right into them. And the Sussy Brigade is unfortunately going to get wiped here. So Union holding firm at B. Union holding firm at A. This is really just a shootout. And the shootout right now is going to favor the Union. They have more men in on top of that. They have two flags compared to the Confederates one. So if you don't know if your team has less flags than the other team, then uh, you will start losing tickets, which is what we see your Confederates need to do something. A is a very hard position to take because, like, just look at this open field. Absolutely insane. 
Trying to get through that town is probably the best solution, but then they got to go through this whole big field. Union has plenty of time to react. Uh, so I feel like we're, for, a, for the moment anyways, we're probably going to see a stalemate. So yeah, fun times here on the battlefield of War of Runs. Confederates just probably trying to reorganize after getting wiped there. So, so it looks like in terms of the um, Union defense of point A, it looks like Hood's division, I, which I this is, presume this is Hood's division. Uh, so 8th Ohio and the Hood's division is holding up in the house. At B, further forward is more Hood's division. Uh, holding down B, making sure Confederates can't even like attempt to overtake that we have the 20th new york holding these rocks to the left of a on a it looks like we have more of hood's division hood's division showing up in a lot of numbers tonight uh is this the 30th 30th ohio That was absolutely beautiful there. A rare moment, but not a rare one for those in the 30th Ohio. Uh, they lead many beautiful chants. So, and then on the far right here, we have the 7th Mass. Union have a very, a very big and firm position, and now the Confederates are beginning to all mass charge A. Oh my goodness, flag to away, please. This is a beautiful sight. Look how beautiful that is. Any other banjo music confederates? 30th Ohio coming in to hit the side of the second Mississippi, who is coming in on the right side. It's the 20th New York moving in. I think 20th New York is moving in. But right now, Confederates do have more men on point. Seventh Mass is now finally beginning to push into here. Confederates absolutely overwhelming them. Despite the Union having more men on the battlefield, they have a lot of guys over here. So Confederates attacking making use of the spread out union and now they're going to be able to take that middle point there which is huge because it'll be hard for the union to take i'm guessing union will retake it at some point oh my god <sighs> i'm guessing union will retake it at some point um just because of sheer numbers or rather they would take the c point but it looks like the a point has been uncapped So 7th Mass is sitting back here, shooting at the Confederates on point. Well, it looks like Hood's division is slamming right into the Confederate line. Unfortunately, though, actually, you can see some 2nd USR here as well. Unfortunately, though, they came in a little late, and Confederates are getting those respawns. For those of you who don't know, they're in formation, so they're getting a new guy every 10 seconds from each of those flags. Confederates are able to secure A with more reinforcements coming in from their spawn. Union kind of trickling in. Now the 7th Mass is fake charging. Uh, that's a new one. And as more Union Hoods Division is pushing in, Confederates have capped the A point. Confederates need to desperately hold this position. Their respawns pouring into this position. Union respawns are also beginning to come in and fight over this A point. And now, it looks like some of Hood's division is now charging in straight as these men. I like it. I like the fact that they aren't charging all towards the flag. They need to charge them and they'll send that flag towards A, which they're doing absolutely beautifully. The rest of the Union charging in. It looks like Hood's division and the 7th Mass. Confederates go down to taking losses. Union, so far, the Hood's division guys in front, they're kind of doing smart. Because here's the thing, right? They are all bunched up on this point. At least those guys are. Union now going down to engage. So, when you're capping a point, you do not want to bunch up in the middle like that. Union's doing a good job by spreading out. 
However, if you have all your guys bunched up, artillery can go insane on you. And along with that, uh, you guys just make easy shots because Confederates just got to shoot at one area. They'll probably hit. Uh, charging be getting here on the point. Uh, I think Union's going to be able to hold this. Uh, the imbalance has gone down by a couple men here. More down to 15 man imbalance. As the Union will be able to successfully hold Killer. Wow, he got that kill. There you go. And the Union have controlled the A point. So not surprising their Union with their superior numbers. Taking advantage of that and resecuring that point as quickly as they could to even dwindle the Confederate numbers even more. Union mass respawning here. Is there any Confederate group going to be right now? Nope. We still have Union holding the house here. My guess this is 8th Ohio. What are they doing in here? It's kind of cool how I can see all the uh, the different rooms here. I'm on a fucking roof. What? what? How would you get on the roof? Where's the flag bearer? Oh no. The flag bearer has spawned Mr. Zackley on top of the hill. On top of the house. That's a first. Um, so going back over here, nothing much has changed. Confederates are holding at sea, probably to just make sure that the Union don't try to take it. I don't think Union's gonna try to take it. I don't think they should. Um because Union has a Firm grip on A right now. Confederates beginning to move out towards B, realizing that it'd be very hard for them to do. Ooh, this will be interesting. So, yeah, is our boy here still on the roof? He is. Mr. Zachary. In a unique position not seen before on the War Rights Battlefield. So yeah, Confederates massing up here at A. However, we do have an expeditionary force going towards the B point. It looks like, is there 5th NC? So it looks like 1st Maryland and the 5th Florida here are beginning to move out towards the B point in the distance. While the rest of the Confederate force is holding here at A. Or outside A, they're not holding at A. Trying to secure this union seems to be reorganizing desperately. You can see them running in all different directions in the distance. Uh, some of them, yeah, I think this is Hood's division. Uh, yep. Fifth Texas of the Hood division is rushing over towards B. As you can see, there is a Confederate force. It looks like 20th New York is moving over there as well. Confederates should have charged before the Union could start sending men that way. That is just my opinion because now, or they could charge now and try to overwhelm uh, the Union. The Union haven't transferred that many men to be. So, it'll be intriguing. I want to see who's over here at C and then we will make our way back over to B. Who do we have here? I think we got shots from right here. Yeah, I got bucket. Might want to take your bayonet off. Well, Roger. Not used to always taking it off. Oh, look at the slaughter in the making right here. That's the gray guys. Move up to the fucking blue guys. The blue guys are all waiting <laughs> on them, all outnumbered. And Save stuff. my Lilith. Still looking? <laughs> oh, my. That's fantastic. I wish I could stay there for a little longer, but we must see if anything is happening. So, looks like the Confederate force is fighting at B, mostly white. Confederates beginning to push up. Let's quickly go to B here. My apologies for not going there almost instantly. Um, yeah, Confederates got inside the house here. Close, close the door. He's oh. right here, stab him. Oh. Fuck you, Yankees. Jesus Christ. I got him. Is there another Confederate? There is. 
Now they're charging in door A. Perfect timing. Hood's division. I think that's Hood's or 20th. One of the two. Hood's division there. Uh, pushing back to A as the Confederates again are mass charging this point. Against the 1st North Carolina. And I th think the... Ah, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't see that. Uh, but anyways, Union immediately getting wiped here on point. Uh, Confederates have control. Confederates going down the breaking, though. Um, I don't know if there's much hope for the Confederates to term the winning. Uh, Union going to be hopefully pouring in from both sides here. Let's get an overview here. Uh, it's going to be hard to tell who will win. This encounter about even numbers so far on this confounder confederates beginning to low looks like lower this flag. Yep, it's being lowered right now. About to be successfully lowered. It is successfully lowered. And they will start raising this up. However, Union is mass charging straight on the flag. Confederates are smart. Oh my goodness. Confederates are smart in that they aren't massing on the A point. Um the, for the sake of artillery, because as we saw, Union just had great artillery shots. And now charging has begun here. On this point. So, I think Union... Ah! It's so close. Respawns are now coming in on both sides here. Union still has their flag up. Smokey here. Getting kills. Jeez. A slaughter here on both sides. More Confederates are trickling in. Union is trickling in as well. This is this is really just uh this game is gonna end right here. <laughs> both sides are gonna go down uh, relatively soon, I would think. Uh, the Union retreat. Union is still holding there at B. Union pouring in from all sides. Most of their spawn. Confederates seem, to, for the meantime, have won the point. Get the fucking so Confederates winning the charge. However, I don't know if this will change once to win the game unless they drag this out. If they drag this out, I could see Confederates having a chance. But Union need to be aggressive here. Which, as we can see, a lot of them are coming from their spawn right now. Union artillery getting some shots right in the point. Look, the, the flag goes down. Confederates can't cap. Look at that. Go. <laughs> so yeah, Union, Union sitting back, not engaging, not charging in, which is surprising. Union artillery devastating the Confederates there. Uh, math. Uh, it's still about 15 man in balance that I can see, but Confederates should be able to cap. They're not capping. Why aren't they capping? Someone's gotta. This... Wow, they only got one kill, even though being a direct hit. Someone needs to raise the flag. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, raise the flag! They're charging in, boys. They're charging in. Union now charging in. Preacher getting away with that Union uh, Confederate flag. Same thing. No, not same thing. Uh, same thing meaning a flag though. And so Union start charging in. Union hitting, taking losses, but that doesn't mean much. Union's are going to be able to win this charge. Union reformed uh, and are charging. Confederate responds are actually holding back here. So Confederates have given up. I'm trying to take the point, at least for now. Union is going to be able to recap this point. And probably knock the Confederates down the last stand. Relatively shortly. Relatively shortly. Ooh, who do we got? A risky man. 
Oh, he gets one. Can he get two? Oh, we got a team stab there. Ferd coming in. Ferd gets a kill. Ferd misses and Bear gets him. In the Union camp. So, uh, mini brawl there. Mini melee. No one won that. Everyone died. Uh, wow. This is... Uh, Plenty unfortunate for the Confederates there. However, Union's able to hold that position. This has been the story of this game. Confederates showing moments of greatness, but then just being overwhelmed by that 15-man imbalance. What do we got over here? Probably 28th New York. Pushing off back to those racks that we saw. Them. Where are you, Ohio, man? You have to sit in the house for 45 minutes and have two moments of action this whole game. So, Confederates reforming, uh, thinking again to charge in, but that imbalance is still there. Uh, it's 15 now, exactly. But that is quite unfortunate. Well, let's take into consideration artillery. Those six, so Confederates have. 80 some if so confederates have quick math uh, uh, 82 I think and the union has about um, 108 102 so it's essentially still like a 10 man imbalance there so Confederates going down the last stand. Union had taken losses here. What do we have Ramboing here? Actually, don't Ramboing. Union's out there. Jim doing a little um, move to get better aim there. I don't know if he hit, though. <laughs> so, yeah. Year. Confederates uh, seem to be maneuvering out towards their artillery. I think they're trying to go out and around. However, they are in last stand, so that means they do not get any more response. Um, the best for the Confederates to do here is either to mass charge or uh, pull back towards C and force the Union to come to you, which I think is what some of the confederates are doing but not all of them uh maybe they're just trying to delay them so they can reform on that hill uh i don't know but i i'm kind of surprised that the whole confederate force is not moving in that direction right now uh, we do have some confederates over here engaging the eighth ohio eighth ohio getting some action after a while But, yeah. So it looks like we have Sussy pulling back here with um, second in Mississippi. And who do we have up here? Ah, the Sharpshooters. Uh, more Confederates coming in here. Seventh, South Carolina. They got a kill. Oh no! The 30th Ohio successfully wiping the Confederate artillery. So, Confederates, except for that pocket, have been basically pushed off the map. The rest of the Confederates holding up on this artillery position in the uh, Boulevard Heights readout. Which is a fun map. 
So yeah, they're holding up in this artillery. Uh, force trying, we trying to force the Union to come to them. Uh, so Smokey bringing his men out of the second Mississippi. So the last Confederate force here. Thirty of fire with their coin chance are coming in to wipe this Confederate force here. And I think they're gonna be able to do that successfully. So the last we have Timber Lake, Dakota. And we got Dixie Dixie dies. They got a team kill there. Um, but yeah, this is really delaying the inevitable. This is second Mississippi. Second Mississippi. Pushing up really far forward here. Um, and we have Hood's division of the first North Carolina. I'll lead in this charge. I'm the Confederates. Uh, by Blackjack here. <laughs> This guy have a... <laughs> yeah, people. Oh my goodness. Blackjack's getting wiped and instantly retreats. Because he ain't doing any damage with that many men. <laughs> Actually, you heard him say he tricked them. They tricked them, so maybe they were trying to deceive him. But I do not know what is in the minds of these players. So they're reforming. This is going to be a slow and subtle death for the Confederates. Who is here? Hit that. And he goes down. Look at Mississippi appearing out of nowhere. Uh... You're only getting a, maybe one kill there. Uh, volley gone. They're not going to be able to get reloads in time before the 30th and the 20th charge straight into this group. Coming after you. Mr. What a great song. And now the whole of Union is charging on the last stronghold of the Confederates here. Uh, Confederate soldier actually making it away though. Probably getting trash talked right now. The boys, it's Richmond. Charge. That's what I'd be saying if I was playing right now. So, Union. So, the last stronghold of the Confederacy is being charged out right now by the Union. Intense fighting union grugging here. Uh, interesting strategy. Oh my goodness. Union massing in here. Soundboards galore. Uh, union just steamrolling here. And I think that will be the end of the Confederacy. Right after this pocket gets killed here. Are there any more Confederates over there? Uh, there's a couple. Uh, you can see some on the right and then some on the left. There's one more guy on the left here. I think he goes down. And uh, this is the last pocket. Take the shot. The shop shooters. Oh, some guy sees him. He has been neutralized. Come on, you motherfucker! <laughs> oh god! Oh god! You are right. You are right. You are right. Door, the best musician in the game, goes down and that ends it for the Confederacy. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah, uh, Union did exactly what they needed to do. They had more men. They did just exactly what they needed to do in this round. They held two points. They just won because they had more men. Confederates doing... I think a pretty good job. Maybe could have tried to gone for me, B and A at the same time to force the Union to choose. Because Union was really overreacting, especially early on. They overreacted less towards the end. 
However, Union was overreacting at the beginning, and they kind of used that to their advantage. So, yeah, I can't complain. Both sides did good. It was a fun fight. With that being said, we will see you guys in the next round. Holy cow, 1,200 casualties. Crazy. Here we are in our second round here of Valley. Uh, the numbers are more even by two, 13-man uh, in balance. Uh, however... It should be a fun round nonetheless. A beautiful map here on the Harper's Ferry Battlefield Schoolhouse Ridge, but like mega expanded. I love this map, especially when there's like more than 200 players on here. So the Union artillery position is just phenomenal on this map. Like, look at that. It's it's so beautiful. You get easy access to B and A. Not to C, though. Uh, Confederates making uh, charging towards A, and it looks like they're sending their forces to move towards C. Union beelining it towards B as that is their closest point. And Union also sending a force towards C. C. Sorry there. Confederate artillery also having beautiful positions here. Uh, this is If you're artillery man, you're going to love this map. So Union's getting B. There's no question. Confederates are getting A. That's no question. C is the question though. Union does have a smaller force going to sea. However, Confederates do have a larger group of men. Let's check out this group of men. Looks like we have the second Mississippi. And in front of them is the Pickett's Brigade that is pushing towards C. And then in the back here, Union capturing B. We have the 8th Ohio. Again, going for that side point along with the 20th New York. Uh... So this last round, 8th Ohio really taking that side. And Union is beginning pushing forward to that crossroads position. This is a very good position. Confederates are about to cap A in a moment. Like this, this position here is insane. Because you can get a picket fence from any direction. I mean, that's also a beautiful position that some Confederates have gotten. But Confederates have capped A. Union has capped B. The fight for C has begun. Union... Like I said, got there first. Uh, Confederates, though, it looks like they just took some shots here from the distance. I would not recommend. They should push forward, be aggressive. Maybe they're waiting for their friendlies here. But taking shots from this distance when the enemy has cover and you don't, uh, not the greatest of ideas. Union's going to be able to cap C here, though. Confederates need to charge in. They don't. They probably don't. Again, they probably don't know that they have more men. Uh, but they need to push up to that picket fence. Uh, to even have a chance because they don't have cover. Union does. Union could start shifting down like they're doing right now. I think this is the 20th here. The 20th is shifting down to even get better shots. Confederates crouching here, which let's let's take a look here. Never mind. Crouching might be a good idea. However, if you die while crouching, that's three tickets. But the, like again, look at like from that overview, it looked like the Confederates had a terrible position. But once we went down to that ground level. You saw they had a nice defilade, um, which is which is beautiful to see. Uh, Confederates pushing up to the picket fence now here on C, overwhelming the 20th New York. Nothing's really happened. Both sides hanging at that crossroads position. Um, we're holding that down, artillery is going to have fun. And it looks like we have some of Hood's division pushing out to reinforce their friendlies here at C. I wish I would have been there five to ten seconds sooner. So yeah, it looks like we're just gonna have a really a close range shootout here on the snake fence here. Uh, Confederates have more men, but we do see that Hood's division group coming in. Are those respawn? Oh no, do these? Okay, they have a five. This is fascinating. Oh, can he hit that shot? He is buck and ball. Uh, but his shots go a little to the right. Those Union pushing up there. Uh, Confederates have a lot of artillery. Or they actually, they have some infantry up there. Uh, nothing really happening here. Okay, this is surprising. Uh, let's check out the Union defensive position here. So it looks like we have the 7th Mass and some of the Hoods holding on the left there. So those Hoods guys were moving over. More Hoods division and the 2nd USR holding at the crossroads. And this is 30th Ohio, I'm guessing. 30th Ohio holding here in the hay bales. I can understand why they're doing that to possibly make it harder for artillery to see them. Uh, the Confederate artillery, maybe not because they're facing that way. I thought this was Confederate artillery for a moment. But CSA is charging out the Union artillery. Oh, just 
Toby, oh no, Toby, Toby. Toby goes down. So, yeah, Confederates wiping the artillery. Um, I, I'm intrigued to why 30th Ohio is holding in the hay bales. They're crouching. More tickets for death. They also aren't on the picket fence. I think Confederate artillery could still see them. I may be wrong. But we do have a Union force charging towards A on the far away distance. Is anything happening at C? It looks like from this angle, Union have been able to shoot down the Confederate forces here. No, I don't think a charge... But Union just able to shoot out with overwhelming numbers, despite the Confederates have a flag, having a flag. So imbalance is still there, and yeah. So you again, this is absolutely a beautiful position. It's regardless of where the Confederates try to attack, it's going to be very hard to take. They can attack from this way, wide open field. They can attack from this way, wide open field. There's no easy way to do this, and the Union's about to cap. The A point and possibly start a counterattack, which would be very hard for the uh, would be very it would be very hard for the Confederates to take. But Confederates beginning to push through. So as you can see, there is this tunnel here. It offers the defilade a little bit, but still anything is better than that open field. Very well done there by the Confederates. 30th readjusting here. I don't know who artillery was, but I almost got Union there. So it looks like the 5th, so some of Sussie here in the Army of Northern Virginia, A, has been neutralized. So Union for sure has C. Union for sure has A. But the fight over B begins. Now, even though, right, there's a 3-minute counterattack. It is not a 3-minute counterattack. It's more like a two-minute counterattack because you have to lower and raise your flag. If you lower their flag completely, that does not end the counterattack. You need to raise your own flag. So it is not a lot of time to do that. So we could see the 30th here, the A and B, uh, have, they push back the A and B. Uh, so yeah, the counterattack begins. A is going to be a desperate fight right now. I mean, B is, sorry. Same thing. Are these Union? So we do have some Union pushing back here towards this middle fight. Shots have been beginning. Confederates going down to engaged here. Uh, Confederates need to be charging. They're outnumbered. They need to push in. Even if they're outnumbered, they're, they're outnumbered overall. Union is getting more and more reinforcements to come in here. And also, it takes a long time. Like, look at this. Almost a minute is gone of the counterattack. Like, that's how crazy short these this is. More Confederate respawns. They're not like these guys aren't going to be able to do much. Um, these front guys need to charge. Do these guys even have a flag? I don't think they do. Oh my! You can see that shot bounce. That was kind of cool. Um, but you don't. Those oh Confederates have lost. This game's done. Uh, unfortunately, the Pickett's Brigade does not have a flag in the Second Mississippi here. They don't have a flag. Uh, we do have some Confederates pushing over here, but I think they're a little far away. I don't think they have a flag either. Confederate steam lining. I don't think they're going to cap it in time. I don't think they're going to be able to rush through that Union group and get it. Uh, does this group have a flag? No, they don't. Union going over to retake their artillery. But Union, I think, just won this game. In decisive fashion, too. Where is the closest flag for this group? I don't think they have a flag ready. Where the, uh, There's a dropped flag over there. Uh, there's probably... A, oh, yeah, the dropped flag is there. They need to the beeline to the flag. I don't think it'll matter, though. 55 seconds left here. Confederates do have a flag here. However, it's running away. Um, so, Confederates win. Uh, they have overwhelming forces there. They're not going to be able to uncap and recap in 40 seconds, so this game is over. 30 seconds left on the clock. Uh, a charge commencing over in that direction. Confederates winning, but, but they don't have a flag. I don't think they can uncap and recap in time. What are they saying down here? Okay, so I'm... I'm fuck it, I'm... Yeah, 
you well done to the union there uh inbounds is 15 confederates going on the kicking losses here uh yeah that's the end of the round that's crazy union pushing in here uh confederates overwhelming on uh, surrounding that flag yeah wow uh not much to say for that round really um union did perfect there they took two out of the three points uh, they sent a small group out to capture the one point they didn't have, capped it, and then held it. It was unfortunate for the Confederates that they didn't have any of their flags. Because you can see they lost. Uh, let's just watch where the Confederate flags are. So I think Confederates lose. They lost a flag at A. They lost a flag at C. They lost a flag outside of A. But then it's picked up there. Uh, but that's too far away. That's just so far away. Well done there to the Union. Uh, Confederates, unfortunately, they aren't numbered. They should have um, probably just tried to hold one of those points and push from there, um, like hold A and then go for C, but that's just so hard. And here's the result of tonight's battle. You can see the U.S. piece that we were watching tonight did get wiped and lost some resources in the way, but Pickett's Brigade took a lot of casualties. Same with the Walker's Division on the other side of the map. Both fights were big, it appears, and took a lot of casualties, which is always fun to see. And with that being said, here's the post-game interview. Here we are with our post-game interview for the NA House Divided Campaign Server 1 tonight. We had two fun conquest maps. The Union Campaign won both maps. Uh, was it Outskirts was the first one? And then Valley was the second one. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, Union did win. However, there was... Uh, 15, 10, 15, 20 man in balance at any point in the game in favor of the Union. However, it was still fun to watch. Regardless of that, we have a couple of representatives from both sides tonight. With that being said, we'll start with the Union team tonight. Um, we have Oliford here with us. Oliford III. Uh, hello. Uh, I am Captain Esquire Senior Colonel Oliford III, and you can call me Captain Esquire Senior Colonel Oliford III for short of the 30th Ohio. Thank you for that. And also, from 30th Ohio, we have Beamon. Hey, how are you? My name is Beamon. I'm first lieutenant for 30th Ohio. I've been called Beamon, Beaumont, um, Bowman, but it's pronounced Beamon. But you can use whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. Appreciate it. My apologies. Uh, oh, and you're... then, <laughs> last union rep, USA campaign rep, is uh, CJ. Uh, Lieutenant CJ from the 20th New York. All right. Thank you. And then, representing the CSA tonight, we have Scott. What's up, guys? Scott's Sussy Brigade. Always fun to be here. Sweet. I appreciate it. With that being said, we'll dive into the first round of outs Outskirts. Uh, Union, you guys won the first map. So what was your guys' strategy going into that battle, and how did you react to the ever-changing battlefield? Uh, oh, you go, CJ. Oh, no, you can, you can go on that one. Uh, well... We, we kind of came up the, with the strategy together. It's basically send most of the team center, control that center point, and use the uh, terrain and definitely cover around it to <clears throat> help bolster the defenses, then send a small group over to the left point, capture that, and hold it. The uh, We shifted left and right as <clears throat> as needed. Sorry. <clears throat> I swallowed something wrong. <clears throat> yeah, we shifted left and right as needed, but most of the fighting happened in the center. Any other union want to say anything? I would also say that the plan was uh, to try and trap the CSA away from the last point, which is what, if I recall correctly, was it B, uh, which was the one all the way um, at the farmstead, Ollie? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the house. The B, so as to contain them on A and make sure that we always held two flags where the CSA was only held on one uh, while they tried to engage us off of the A point. Yeah, the, the uh, CSA did try to send a decent force to uh, be early on, but uh, I pretty much sacked, you know, I think 7th, it might have been 7th Mass or one of the Ohio's, but... Uh, it was 8th you know, Ohio. 8th Ohio, yeah. Eight, eight, yeah well, 8th Ohio was happy, but we sent two guys in behind them, so we charged, you know, they, they got hit from 8th Ohio from the front and charged from behind and just wiped. Um, my guys actually, yeah, I expected my men to die completely, but like half of them survived the charge, so... Yeah, CSA didn't even see you guys going behind them. Yeah, and that, that happened multiple times where the CSA, yeah, you know, charged toward B and didn't realize we were coming in behind them. So it was not a one-time issue. 
Laurie. That being said, uh, Scott, what was the CSA plan going into that round, and how did you guys react to the ever-changing battlefield? Uh, so our plan was pretty much to hold the side points and work our way into the center. What we were trying to do is draw the Union to one side, and then we were going to use that side to our advantage by, um, you know, uh, work into the center point because we knew their spawn was pretty much right there at the center point. Um, so we we said, all right, well, we're going to send the bulk of our force, our force up to like the readout area and hold that and occupy it. Then we were going to have them shift down to A, there was a lack of communication. Um, and those attempts to take the center point were contested too heavily. We didn't attack in, in coordinated uh in coordinated charges and it just kind of fell apart. Um we just we couldn't uh really get anything done so everything just kind of fell apart though. We and then eventually we just said screw we'll just start fighting if they want to keep fighting us. I mean we were there to to destroy that piece and we were just like screw it if we take a lot of casualties we we could just retreat back to the city. And so, yeah, at one point we were just like, screw it, we'll just go for casualties. You guys did destroy the piece, correct? I believe so, yes. So, yeah. Yep, uh, although I think your piece might also be, uh, there, you know, out of men. Oh, no, yeah, our piece is also, the PB's piece is also very heavily yeah. Ha Cause, hurting. Cause, yeah, well, because they took uh, 400 in that se second match, 600 in the... How many did they have going into it? They had about, I think, like... I think it was somewhere around 14 to 15, maybe even higher. I'm not exactly okay, so sure. They have, like four, they have like four or 500 left. Yeah, they, they're they yeah. they're hurting. They're going to have to run away. But really, the whole point of what we were talking about with this was pretty much just to relieve pressure um, on the board. There was... Uh, three units surrounded one CSA piece. And so what, uh, and there was four actually really there, but last week uh, the Sussy Brigade fought and destroyed a piece. So we were just trying to get that, that unit, that CSA unit kind of relieved up there. And uh, so that way they wouldn't get yeah, that, encircled. Yeah, I, think, I think this kind of made, made it backfire though, because now you have two pieces who are, you know, vulnerable. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the only question I had, Scott, was I think it was Sussy who was pushing towards that side point B at the house Correct. at the beginning yep. of the game. So, yep, Sussy pushed B and the rest of the team went to the C point. We uh, rid we were we kind of pulled a little bit light tonight. We were supposed to have around 45, um, but everybody, I don't know for what reason, we just decided, okay, I guess we're pulling light tonight. and That's how it kind of played out, but... I mean, we had fun either way, but yes, uh, continue on. Yeah, so you guys uh, went behind the house, or I guess from your perspective in front, uh, around to the snake fence and just sat and shot down the 8th Ohio, which allowed the Union to get reinforcements in there in time. Do you know why you guys weren't charging right away? So I was, so, um, I was not actually at B, um, I was skirmishing with uh, on A from the roadside. Um, I do know what they were trying to do at B was to they didn't they didn't see the other unit there that was flanking around, so they just tried to eliminate that first unit to occupy that snake rail fence. So that way, anything that was be coming across that open field would pretty much just be a a slaughterhouse. But it ended up being that. You know, the Union did a very good flanking maneuver and got around behind them without them even knowing it. And uh, by the time they knew it, they were already encircled and it was uh, too late to pull out or, or do anything. So they just tried to fight to the last stand. All right. Yeah, thank you for that. My, my seven, seven man cutting up, you know, cutting off <laughs> the 20 man unit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you probably could have broken out, you know, through us. but Those are some help you... men then. Well, um... What it looked like on our screen was you guys, like, as soon as you guys took the A point, it looked like a lot of dudes went from A to B. Yes. Like, it, it on our screen, it looked like literally y'all sent pretty much the mass majority of your team over there to B. And so they tried to fight it out as best as they could. But, I mean, 
they were so heavily, I think it was maybe 30, 20, 25 to 30 guys over there holding that spot. So 25 to 30 guys versus, you know, a, a big chunk was, was they were like, okay, yeah, we're, we're not going to win this, but we'll I mean, hold I out for as long as we can. They're just getting sandwiched and shot to pieces. Yeah, that, yeah. that was, yeah, that was it. And uh, so before they, they knew it, they were already encircled and they were like, well, we, uh, we got outplayed here, boys, pretty much is what it was, yeah, but. Yeah, that, that happened a second time when you guys got, you, got, you guys got close to B that time, but uh, Aetho High was in the house shooting you guys down and Twain just comes in behind you and, you know, clears you clears like the 15 10 to 15 guys remaining you know yeah yeah so uh what we actually did for that second one is that was also a lack of communication it was only meant for maryland's like five skirmisher guys i believe to go over there and um decap that point and then just run away to try to relieve the pressure off of a um we didn't realize that the there was a unit in the house so that kind of caught us off guard and then we saw you guys coming and before we could get out of there there was people coming and hitting us again so we were like we were just it was literally like a lack of communication and we just kept getting just encircled i mean the union played it perfectly to be honest like, the thing is, Gus, is you, you may complain about the numbers but eighth ohio stayed on b point the entire time they never yeah. left it so like you guys actually had probably equal if not probably, probably actually a little bit more numbers actually fighting for a like when you guys actually fought for a oh no I'm, I'm not saying that i was yeah no i agree with you there i was just meaning that the you know the union they played it perfectly on that b point about how they yeah. they were able to just get around behind us and and you know catch us um we weren't expecting that heavy of a resistance there that and that much we we would have thought that it would have been like oh they're going to a or they're going to the midpoint and then they'll push guys over the center we didn't realize that there was going to be another big flanking force coming around too well, i mean the thing the thing is i i had my guys there's a rock between a and b just in the field you know fairly small rock formation and i said yeah you know, and i have like seven or eight guys i always had them at that rock so when you guys were running towards b right you, know, you have to run across that open field you know past that fence and we just would run behind you and no one ever looked behind so that's that's what really was happening is we were just yeah we were just sneaking in behind you from these rocks because you, you just passed us <laughs> oh so. yeah it make, makes sense makes yeah, sense so it, it wasn't like a massive you know, force just sneak you know we were just we saw you going towards b and we just charged with you that actually happened on a too because those rocks you know provided if you if you guys went towards a or charged a we would also just counter charge behind and hit hit you know the flags and stuff oh um, yeah yeah when you got you guys would always hit us in the flank right after we get we get the a yeah, point no, no, yeah none of you guys ever took the rocks and so we just had a nice little position to ambush and shoot at 30th was collapsing in on the side because we were kind of the um the right flank of the a point there was the flag, then there was the rocks, and then there was the field to the right between the tents, and that's where 30th was mostly, and we'd see a bunch of people coming down the hill and immediately disengage what we were fighting and go to the flag. And it seemed like there was consistently an engagement on point itself in the middle point, uh, so there was a continuous wave of Union reinforcements coming in, and since there was a short distance from Union reinforcements to uh, the center point, I think that was also benefiting us as well. It never seemed like we were running out of men, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that. Um, honestly, you know, I mean, numbers aside, that I mean, the Union just beat us tonight. That was that was the biggest thing I really took is, you know, they had the better game plan, and, you know, they, they played to the strengths that they had available to them, and we just didn't use our strengths. Like, I, I would say – that C point coverage, if we were able to work from that C point up the hill, it would have been a different story instead of just coming straight out in the middle of the open from our spawn. But they just kept on sending in wave after wave of people from deployment without making any like real, like organized charges where like you've got two or three units that are attacking from different angles and it was it was kind of just like I have to say the union really really got us tonight. They uh really scrambled us up. That's a that's for sure. So on the, on the second map, uh, Scott, uh, did you intentionally uh, let us quick cap or? Uh, 
that was also another uh, lack of communication and and uh, that, just yeah, misplaced. That's, the, that's a 250 ticket uh, hit, I think, right? I uh, I believe I'm not sure about the exact numbers myself. Yeah, because were you guys the ones who went over to C though? Because I you know there were like two regiments that went C and two regiments that went like center point. So Maryland tonight actually wasn't with any big groups. Um, we were just kind of a skirmishing kind of group around and we were actually in between the A and B point on like a set of rocks up the hill. Um, and like we had units from A and you, we had units at C that was, uh, I believe PB and second Mississippi that were at C and then all the rest of Sussie and, uh, a and V were on the A side of the map, and um, yeah, that one was uh, that one was definitely another lack of communication and just poor planning, to be honest. Uh, yeah, because that one was kind of odd because you guys outnumbered us on C, right? You you got there about the same time, yeah, but we were able to get our loads, and it was probably like fifteen guys against like thirty over on that C point, but you guys just stayed up. Like whoever was over there stayed on the fence, just tra trading shots. You know, we can retreat the you know behind a deflated reload though. Yeah, I was. You know, I was just held. I was very surprised to see that they didn't charge right away. Yeah, I, I, I guess like, held on right side. Yeah, attrition. You know, pretty much attrition that left side down, and until you know reinforcements could arrive, and then the CSA just pulled back. You know, didn't even try capping or uncapping the. I was surprised though too, because Hood's just... division was even exhausted, and they had the larger units as well. Um, I don't think anybody was expecting CSA to not really fight us if it was intentional or not. As you said, it was unintentional, really, for that point. Like, we were extremely surprised when it came to a um, three cap. Yeah, I, I just assumed you were trying to save tickets and, you know, not drag it out. But, uh, you know, take the 250 loss because, you know, yeah, it's 250 tickets. But, you know, if you play the whole match out, you'll probably lose you know, six, 700 guys. So That was so marvelous fight, though. I mean, CSA made it, did not make it easy. At all. Yeah, I mean, even the second match, yeah, I had, had, you know, some pretty heavy fighting for, you know, a short the, time. I, I do have to give it to CSA already, actually, on both matches, because... Oh, yeah, uh, they were doing great. Yeah, um, especially on the second one, I had to completely switch up how I defended that right flank because of the CSA already. They were getting consistent shots in the center of my line. Is that why you who guys were crouching in the hay bales? Yeah, because okay. we, I wanted to keep like that slight raise in the um, terrain to my rear to and slight obstruction of the bush to deter them from hitting me. And I was hoping that they didn't pre-sight that part in because people don't normally do that. But at the same time, I wanted cover from what was coming ahead of me, which from what I could tell was two flags and a, like maybe half or a third of the CSA team. Uh, who was on your Audi, if I may ask? Um, I believe it was second MS plus some guys from the fifth and CRD and some mm. guys from um, or well Sussy Brigade Army, uh, their artillery, our artillery, and then we also had uh, I believe some guys from PB on Artie as well. I think we both just want to commend you all did fantastic with that Artie. Yeah, give them compliments from the thirtieth. Oh, we we definitely will. I'll I'll make sure the word gets out to them. So... Yeah. Because from my perspective, we were kind of in between the the A and the B point, and mm -hmm. um, they sent. I I saw like you guys all mass on B. I have my guys skirmishing, and all of a sudden I see a freaking arty round come in, and it just like was like right in, in the midst of y'all's line, and it, they just kept pounding that same spot the whole night on that second map, and I was like, well, they're doing a really good job. They need to just keep doing that. We we got a chance here. Yeah, pr probably one of the better CSARs I've seen recently. Not the best because there was one on Harper's Ferry that was actually hitting the point on Harper's, like on High Street, which that was more incredible. You, if you sure. if you can hit on High Street in downtown with CSA artillery, you are the best CSA artillery. <laughs> Scotts were um, was there supposed to be a CSA force holding A? Because after you guys originally took A, two thirds of your guys went towards the middle point, which I think was B. Yes. And um, then the one third went and charged Union artillery, 
and no one was on A, which let the Union just kind of come through, kill some skirmishers, and cap that point. Yeah, so I was actually the skirmishers that they killed, and I was just like, hey, guy, like, I saw them, like, come over the fence and try to get onto our side. As soon as they did it, I called it out. I was like, hey, guys, uh, we need to get back to A. We need to get back to A. Uh, they're going to overrun it, and they're going to triple cap us. Like, you, we need to get to A, and they were like, oh, well, we'll just take B. We'll just take B. I'm like, you don't understand. We don't have time to take B. We have time we, to we defend didn't even A. We triple cap either. We actually were like, oh, crap, we, we fucked up. We triple capped. Yeah, we, we wanted to keep the round going so we could keep getting um, casualties on you. Yeah, and I, I could. And what, what was like, so it was Sussy Brigade and, or well, the rest of Sussy Brigade other than Maryland plus A and V, and they all attacked B when I called for the, that there was a larger unit coming to A to cap. I'm like, guys, we need to get there. And they were like, oh, we can't defend it. It'll be too much. I'm like, no, like, you don't understand. If A and V and Sussy Brigade are there, you will be able to 100% defend it, and we will still be in this fight. Cause, nope, cause they decided. The far, far right should have capped the C and just instead pulled back, I think, towards B, but that's like a, you know, pretty much the whole map to run. Yeah, that was um, 2nd MS and PB, and I don't really know what they were doing. I know 2nd MS was hesitating so much over there, so that kind of played a part in it, I believe. Um, not entirely sure what happened over there, because I actually, pretty much where I stayed the, that entire second match was just in the center. I pretty much only stayed there at that rock, and uh, obviously until we got driven off, but... Um, yeah, I I had like I barely saw the fighting on A, um, and I I didn't even see anything going on at C. But from what I could tell at C, it was not going too hot. And uh, yeah, it was a uh, definitely a humongous lack of communication in that in that we didn't really have any coordination in that second round. It was just like. A bunch of units just decided, oh, here we go. We're going to do this. And we just did that. Or they were like, oh, we were, we're we need to play it more passive. Like, no, they've got us two cap points and about a third. We need to apply pressure. Why are we sitting back and just letting them beat us down, really? Like, that's not a smart thing to do. Like, we have to be aggressive. We have to hold this because if we if we hold it and take it then that means it's a lot easier to defend and um we could have had a better shot if we would have been able to play a little bit more aggressively with a little bit more coordination it would have i think been a different fight but you know that's how it is you know you lose some you win some you know the yeah. union really yeah. gave it to us tonight so we no, before this team was not having a good time. I mean, I think we had a great, we had a pretty okay time last week. Uh, but recall for the last few weeks before that, there was some trouble the union was having. It's so, two or three weeks in a row. Something like yeah. That. So, you know, as he said, win some, you lose some. I mean, y'all have been very gracious about it. In victory and defeat. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I got to give credit where credit's due. I mean, we did lose. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not the end of the world, but, um, <laughs> I still see a lot of a lot of fighting going on in in this it iteration is, of the campaign. With the, uh, other, with the other server, if they you know, who won or lost on that one? I Maybe. believe the CSA won on that one. Oh, I yeah, do okay. believe that. Um, because I think theirs was pretty quick. Theirs were actually still going on when ours ended. Yeah, what I saw. Huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, our, our our first, like, the first one and second one were pretty quick. It was, like, 45 minutes total because, you know, yeah. we went on wiping them out and then we do a 10-minute cap, so. Yeah, at the end of the day, everything's all right because we have a pretty freaking poppin' pubby server to go back to after this. Hell Man, it's been that. fun. I have one more question. Uh, So, in the middle of the first round, I heard 30th Ohio. Were you guys singing a song or doing one of the corn prayers? Just at a... Uh, 
if you Let's recall. Because it was like everyone was saying words oh, together. It was, it was, was it the true. was it the alphabet song? I don't I don't know. Wait, were we sing, uh, was this the first round or the second round? First round in the middle of it. I uh, we were probably doing the corn prayer then, I would think. Uh, you know, Ollie, uh, have we demonstrated the corn prayer to them? Uh, I don't believe so, not in person. Uh, uh, would you like to do it or do you want me to do it? Uh, uh, Eagle, if you if you may, shall we share with you the prayer of our people? You may. Go ahead, Ollie. <clears throat> this is the battle prayer of the 30th Ohio. Corn to corn, corn. husk to husk, husk. born under corn, corn. Under corn. Always, under, always corn. under corn, the corn shall take, take. The, corn the corn shall protect. Shall protect. But as I walk through the valley in the shadow of corn, I shall feel n fear no Democrat, for thou art with me. Thy cob and thy stock, they comfort me. Amen. Amen. That's fantastic. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Our men have, uh, are well versed in the biblical verse of the Holy Colonel. Man, it's, actually, it's actually a channel in our Discord. We have uh, many holy passages from which to pull from. We do, and it has been recited in death by our uh, very well corn chaplain, Yomer. That's who's fantastic. unfortunately not to uh, join us tonight. Ohio so we did it is not honor. particularly well known for its corn, though. So what got Ohio, your Ohio regiment into you know into the corn? Not particularly, but there is enough uh, corn plus uh, basically Shaggy memes because Shaggy Rogers is from Coolsville, Ohio, and uh, I mean, Daz we, we used were to... the ones though who were charging to you know let's you know what's new Scooby Doo. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, well, uh, we're there, there, we were charging to quite a few too. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason is uh, Daz does a pretty mean Shaggy Rogers impression, and uh, when we first started, that's what he was doing a lot of, like like zoinks, man. And so we kind of played off of that. In fact, the emblem for our Discord is, uh, if you look close enough, it's Shaggy hiding behind the Ohio oh, flag. Seriously, we had another time where we were charging uh, you, you're to, not to King of the Hill. Hey, we don't need all strength, Shaggy. You know, we're good enough. You, you he, don't he, need, you know, point one percent of his power. Oh, we don't even use point zero percent. He's powerful percent. by himself. He is. He doesn't need us. And he, all we need is his prayer to keep us along. You know, we were also charging the king of the hill. All I hear does a pretty mean impression of Hank Hill. So does Daz. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. We have fun in the corn brigade. It sounds like it. Any other comments? Sussy Turner. <laughs> Congratulations to Sussy for a hard-fought fight. Congratulations for the union for bringing it. Yep. yep. Oh yeah, for sure. Don't don't think we're out of this, boys. You know. Well, never, never thought so. Y'all have fought yeah. hard throughout this entire campaign. And so have y'all. You know, we're gonna have to come back next week and give y'all a, a, a bang. We gotta do to y'all what y'all did to us. Y'all really hey. gave it to us. We just gotta return the favor now. Didn't Sussy <laughs> make a bet that if they lost the round or two, they changed their name again? Whatever happened to that? Ah, uh, that was uh for that specific day. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, uh -huh. that and... was for that specific day, and sadly, uh, we didn't lose those rounds. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't Sussy Eterna. So uh, Sussy forever. If, uh, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's all right. I cannot. He cannot tell a lie. Exactly. You know, as the uh, representative here, the major general, I must say, uh. Our name is too deep in the lore of war rights community. Is it now? And it and it's it gets on the nerves of Hood too much for us to change our name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we all need motivation one way or another. Exactly, you know. Our boys like to fight behind a weird little creepy alien guy. And we're gonna keep it. They have that power right brother. now. Uh side note oh yeah they have bad um, flings now as among us characters i just want to say this if you haven't seen our emblem you gotta see it i wish they had it in among us because it is the best thing ever if, all at, right at the beginning of these videos on youtube you can see the logo there with all the regiments it's a thing of beauty let's go yes so, one of the videos i had I put, I like made your guys' logo very large and set the opacity very low behind all the teams. So it's very, very funny. Yes. You know, boys, I just got to say this. There is the blue, Sussy, the blue Among Us character that is 
available. But I got to say this. Is that sussy in another universe? <laughs> that is like our union representatives of sussy. Fresh my so we, we were almost supposed to play with you during this campaign, but you know we got balanced to the to the union side. So I'm scared to see sussy on the union side. Uh, we, we, that's effectively the twentieth. We were supposed to be sussy on the CSA side, but you know they they set us over. How terrible! One day war. CJ will 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 reunite, and y'all could have the blue sussy symbol, <laughs> <laughs> along with Maryland and Delaware, or I guess they're haunts now. I, I First think. Haunts. They're whatever the they want. Theirs is just a sussy character with the, uh, y'all know, it's like just, the, 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 the horse, horse mask. Yeah, yep. the sussy horse mask. On the, That's what theirs is. We're, we're, we're trying to petition to get Zapstar one with the British flag on it. But <laughs> sussy is not, a, not on an it. emblem, it is an idea. It is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Sussy <laughs> Eternal. Sussy now, sussy forever. It's the motto, boys. So, yeah. Uh, with that being said, thank you all for coming on tonight. All the socials of everyone in this post game interview will be in the description if they want one there. Also, all the regiments that participated in this video will be in the description below, as well as the House Divided Campaign Discord if you're interested in uh, having your regiment participate. It's a good campaign. And yeah, we're working on other projects other than broadcasting events. So stay tuned for that going forward. And with that being said, please like, comment, share, subscribe for more. And we'll hope to see you guys in the next Thanks for one. having us, Eagle. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Cue that music! Yeah.